Ezekiel chapter 47. I've got John 7, 37 to 39 and Exodus 17, 6. Afterward, he brought me again unto the door of the house. Behold, waters issued out from under the threshold of the throne eastward. From the forefront of the house stood, stood toward the east, the entrance. And the waters came down from under from the right side of the house. And the, south, and the south side of the altar, and that's the brazen altar. Then brought me, then brought he me out of the way the gate northward, and led me about the way without unto the other gate by the way that looketh eastward. And behold, there ran out waters on the on the right side. And what you're going to find out is from the temple, there's a river that flows east. He brought me, then he brought that, then brought he me out of the way of the gate northward, and led me about the way without unto the other gate by the way that looketh eastward, and behold, there ran out waters on the right side, so the right side of the temple. And when the man that had the line, that's the measuring line, in his hand went forth eastward, he measured a thousand cubits, this would be fifteen hundred feet. And he brought, well, thereabouts, he brought me through the waters, and the waters were to my ankles. And he measured a thousand, that's now worth three thousand feet, and brought me through the waters, and the waters were to my, to the knees. So within fifteen hundred thousand, yeah, between fifteen hundred feet, we go from the ankle to the knee. The warriors were to the knees. Again, he measured a thousand, or up to forty-five hundred. Measured a thousand and brought me through. The, brought me through. The waters were to my loins. The loins symbol power. Zechariah four six. Afterward, he measured a thousand. We're up to six thousand. Six thousand. Yes, yeah, six thousand feet. And it was a river that I could not pass over. Going over his head way over his head for the waters were risen waters to swim in a river that could not be passed over so this river is a minimum of six thousand feet because i would assume he's walking across it and he's got to the point he's six thousand feet give or take and it's over his head. So, if you keep on walking, you probably end up with, you know, with, uh, to the point you'll be at the other side, and, you know, up to your loins, up to your knees, up to your ankles. But the center of this, well, about the center of the deepest part of this river is 6,000 feet that he walks into it. And it's a river that can be swim. And this river is no ordinary river, and this river is not to be found right now. And he said unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen this? Then he brought me and caused me to return to the brink of the river, the side of the river, the bank of the river. Now when I had returned, behold, at the bank of the river were very many trees on the one side and on the other. So this river, you can stand at the river at one bank and you can see the other bank and you can see the tree. Then said he unto me, These waters... The river we just read about, it comes out of the temple, or near the temple, has something to do with that temple. Issued out toward the east country, so it goes west to east. And that's not, that, that's an odd direction of the Bible, because usually the Bible is east to west. And go down into the desert. Well, oh. If a river is going down to a desert, that area is no longer desert, is it? And go into the sea. I would assume the Dead Sea. Which being brought forth into the sea, the waters shall be healed. The Dead Sea is just as it is. It's said. It's dead. Nothing lives there. 
any life, I mean animal life, I'm not talking about human life, because I mean, you can swim or drown. Animal, any animal life that comes close to that Dead Sea, they, they, they don't have long to live. That Dead Sea is so filled with salt, it says you, you, a man can't even drown. And here's animals that breathe by the water through their gills, and today they get salt caked. There is no life in the Dead Sea, as far as animal. Here, it's healed. So when you read in the Old Testament that waters were healed when they came out of the wilderness, I believe Moses threw a stick. I believe Elijah, Elijah threw salt. It's coming back. And it shall come to pass that everything that liveth, which moveth, Whithersoever the rivers shall come, shall live. And there shall be a very great multitude of fish. Because these waters shall come thither. This river is so deep at the 6,000 thereabout foot mark. There is just full of river, full of river, full of fish. There's life in this river. And everything that shall live whither, hither, whither, the river cometh. And that's weird how that's worded. Does that mean if an animal, if a fish dies when he comes to this river, he's going to live? Everything, everything shall live whether the river cometh. This place has been brought with desert and salt death. Now this river brings life. This river is a type of Lord Jesus Christ. You're to go out and get yourself immersed in Christ to get life. The door is where we stood up. We stood at first. And shall come to pass that the fishers shall stand upon it from Engedi even to Angelium. They shall they shall be a they shall be a place and get I and he did get them to spread forth nets their fish shall be according to their kinds as the fish of the great sea exceedingly many what's an occupation is going to be in the millennium fishermen in this river now I hope because then I'm gonna get a new body and all that Fish is going to be a staple diet and probably bread. If you eat a five thousand, wasn't that in a desert place they had they sat down on grass? Didn't just say go down to the desert. Well, I'm not a true fan of fish. I could do without it, but here, great resources of fish. And they're not going to have mercury. They're not going to have Prozac. They're not going to have any medication that you flush down the toilet. They're going to be fresh, juicy, uncursed fish. Now how many times did you read about in the life of Jesus Christ the story of fishermen and fish and nets that almost break? Where do you find that? You know how they should know Jesus Christ was God by Ezekiel 47. You wonder every time something like that happened, eventually sometime in the life of uh, Peter, James, and John, you've ever wondered, they ever reflected back to ever here in Ezekiel 47. You wonder with those fishermen, Ezekiel 47 was that dream, Israeli, you know, southern heaven of a place of great fish. And then all of a sudden, here's this guy that shows up in their life and he's in there breaking nets and got all kinds of fish. And it's even counted in one place in the Bible. And he turns around and tells him, follow me and be fishers of men. So it's going to be interesting. We're going to see, listen, I'm saved. I'm born again. I, hopefully I get some kind of rain in the millennium. 
at least doing something to get some something to millennia. I mean, I'm not gonna unless I quit. Something's gonna be for me in the millennium that I'm gonna be there. I'm gonna see people on this river, and they're gonna be fishing. And it's gonna be great fish, according to the Bible. I got faith. I believe that just as much as I believe Jesus is coming. As God said, it's going to be so. And you can't find this today anywhere over there in the Middle East. So it's got to be prophecy. It's got to be something just as much as uh, they shall pull my beard. Not a bone of me shall be broken. They shall tell all my bones. That's just as much here in Ezekiel 47. So guess what? Like Adam, work shows up in an uncursed earth. Adam was a husbandman, and here you see fishermen. Work is not a curse. The curse is if you don't work. If a man don't work, I forget what it says over there in Timothy, you ought not to eat. And we're getting the time in this world. I'm going to say this world that the jobs are running out. And the mark is coming. The only way you're going to survive is you receive that mark. That's a bunny trail. But think about it. Did you ever realize when you're in the millennium, there's the Lord Jesus Christ. You're going to see boats out there with nets. And you're going to be fishing. You ever realize that? You ever realize that what Jesus did in the Gospels, everything deals with fish is going to happen? Can you, imagine, can you just picture, there's Jesus, Peter, James, and John, Peter nudging Jesus. Hey, why don't you tell them to go fish on the right side? Remember that? Remember you did that to us? And we doubted and all that. Tell them that. Tell them to fish on the right side. Come on, Lord. Do it. Can you imagine James going, hey, look at me. People are here. We've got a couple fish and some bread here. You want to do it again? Come on, Lord, do it again. Show them. Come on. I'm not saying tempt the Lord, but you just you're living the gospels again. That's what I think, and I could be wrong about that. Now watch this. But the miry places thereof and the marshes thereof shall not be healed. They shall be given to Saul. So see, there are remnants, if you can say that for the great sea, of deadness. There are going to be places along this river and this 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 river and the, the sea is going to be dead. You're going to have no life because that's where the salt is going to go. That salt's got to go somewhere. And I believe one of the things they used to do way back when, the old fishing times, I believe they used to salt fish to preserve them. I don't think you're going to have AC and refrigerated units in the millennium. I don't think you're going to have electricity. Maybe possibly that this salt will be used. I don't know. And by the river, upon the bank thereof, on this side, and on that side, both sides shall grow all trees for me. So now, in a millennium, you've got fruit tree. You've got fishing. You've got the Lord Jesus Christ. You've got lambs and rams and bullocks running around. Because you've got to bring them to the temple. You've got the Levitical priests running around. You've got David there. You've got the Lord Jesus Christ sitting on David's throne. You've got fishing. And you got trees. All without the curse. Except for the snake. In the millennium, we're going to be before Genesis 3. There's all the trees, aren't they? Except for one tree. So God has brought man 
5,000, 6,000 years brought him all the way back to where man should have been in the first place. How's that? Brought him right back. Now, Adam did not eat fish. Meat, that kind of meat, I mean animal flesh, was not until Noah when he came out of the ark. Adam was a vegetarian, the Bible records. So now you got fruits and fish. Here are these trees whose leaf shall not fade. I've got Job 8, 16, Psalm 1, 3, and Jeremiah 17, 8. Evergreen? And I'm not talking about a Christmas tree. Here is a original evergreen tree. It's not going to fade. An unusual type of evergreen tree because it says, now I'm not saying an evergreen tree, I'm saying evergreen tree. The color, neither shall the fruit thereof be consumed. Now, how on earth is that going to happen? How many people are going to be in the millennium? Can you just now? I'm, I'm going to go way up the road here. I'm just going to be, you imagine you bring a couple of people to this tree, you grab a fruit, and as soon as you grab a fruit, boom, there's another fruit. You're going to be wanting to have fun. Just keep on pruning fruit and see how much you can get. It ain't going to die, and it's forever going to produce fruit, it says, because you can't consume it. Or maybe our bodies will be to this tree that one fruit will be enough. I don't know. So we've got endless supply of fish and an unmerited amount, somehow, of fruit. Later on when we go through, I don't know if we ever get Lord willing, we'll get to one of the places in the Bible, one of the prophets speak about an Israelite is going to plant seed in the ground and his wife and children are going to follow him, picking the fruit at that moment. But that's later. It shall bring forth new fruit according to his months. So there will be a evergreen tree whose fruit cannot be consumed, and yet that in a particular month, that tree is going to have its, its fruit. That almost matches the tree of life found in Revelation, whose leaves are for a healing, but it's on the earth in the millennium. Because their waters, they issue out of the sanctuary. This river starts in the holy place. The holy of holy place. And when the Bible speaks of the Holy Spirit, out uh, of the belt, living waters, isn't that what we're reading about right now? Did they get the context with Ezekiel 47 when Jesus Christ spoke about the living water? To fish. Be ye fishers of men. And the man went out and sowed seed and produced fruit. Are you getting the New Testament found in Ezekiel 47? And those scholars, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, ought to see the Lord Jesus Christ. And you know what happened if that nation would have received Christ as their Savior? Ezekiel 47 would have happened right in their time. But they rejected him. They put him on a cross. And like Revelation, And the fruit thereof shall be for meat, food, and the leaf thereof 
for medicine. How's that? Herb. Not chemicals. Not something that needs three pages of magazine of side effects. And that's exactly what it says about the tree of life in the book of Revelation. It's got fruit and it's got leaves for healing. Here it possibly could be many trees of life. What Adam lost comes back through the second Adam. You ever wonder how many fish were in those waters with Adam before he fell? You realize what population Eve could have brought forth without having no pain in childbearing, without no death? It was a laugh for Sarah, 90 years old, to bear a child. Imagine a woman 900 years old, Bella, to bear her what number child? So in reality, in the millennium, we're going back to herbal food, uh, medicine. So I believe, and listen, I, I take an aspirin, I, I take antibiotics as needed of my body. I've got two medications for my diabetes. But when it comes down to ailments, I will look at... Uh, I forget what it's called now. The home remedies. I will look at roots and leaves. I believe, and I don't do it, but I drink coffee. I believe tea is probably more better for your body than coffee because guess what it is? It's leaves. You use leaves for cooking. Thus saith the Lord God, This shall be the border, whereby ye shall inherit the land, according to the twelve tribes of Israel. Joseph shall have two portions, Manasseh and Ephraim. Now Ephraim's let out. He's omitted in 144,000. And yet, he shows back up in the millennium. So when you got 144,000 running around, and one of them's not of Ephraim and Dan, you know what the teaching will be? God's all finished with Dan. God is. Look, look where it says, what is it, Hosea? Ephraim's joined the idols. Let them, Ephraim and Dan will never get saved. They can. What's it say in Ezekiel 47, my friend? The twelve, of, the twelve tribes of Israel is going to get that land. They're going to inherit it. And Joseph shall have two portions, his two children. You know for surely someone's going to run around in the tribulation period saying Dan and Ephraim are never going to get it. Just as much, you're to be baptized. You're to be the works of the law to be saved today in the church age. Just as much. And God's already told you the truth. Ye shall inherit it. Tell that to the United Nations. Tell that to Ishmael. One as well as another, the Jews, the twelve tribes of Israel, concerning which I lifted up my hand to give it unto your fathers. Now, what's that picture? Raise your right hand. You shall tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help you God. I do. And that's God speaking. Now, where do I sign my name on that title deed? You try to get Arabian to believe that. God lifted himself up in an oath, like you do in a courtroom, to say that land belongs to the twelve tribes of Israel, not the twelve princes of Ishmael. Big difference between tribes and princes. Read James 1.1. 1, 1.
And this, no, I didn't finish. And this land shall fall unto you for inheritance. And this shall be the border of the land toward the north side, from the great sea, be the Mediterranean, the way of the Hethlon, as men go to Zedad, Haman, Barathutha, Siberian, which is between the borders of Damascus. Well, that's an interesting name. That's an interesting history. And the border of Hamath, Hazer Hatikon, which is by the coast of Haran. And the border from the sea shall be Hazen Inim, and the border of Damascus, and the north, northern, northward, and the border of Hamath, and this is the north side. So if you lay out a map in all these places, you can tell where the land is. And the east side. You shall measure from Haran and from Damascus, from Gilead, from the land of Israel by Jordan, from the border unto the East Sea, and this is the east side, the Jordan River. The south side, southward from Tamar, even to the waters of Strife of Kadesh, the river to the Great Sea, this is the south side southward <clears throat> the west side also shall be the great sea the Mediterranean from the border till a man come over against Hamath this is the west side ye shall divide which we'll talk about in the next chapter Lord willing ye shall divide the land unto, unto you according to the tribe of Israel that is not today There are maps in the Middle East today that don't even recognize Israel. Never mind the 12 uh, tribes of Israel. And it shall come to pass that he, ye shall divide it by lot, just like they did in Joshua's time. So the next division of the land will be by Joshua, Jesus, which acts and Hebrews tells you about Joshua putting Jesus name and that's not an error because you know who's going to bring the Jews into the land the second time Jesus on horseback so shall you divide the land unto you according to the truth it's all going to happen again history repeats itself you know what's going to happen to that Jew when the Lord comes back in the second advent this sounds awful familiar. We have been under bondage under Pharaoh for such a long time, seven years, and this cruel and hardship, and this all kinds of plagues running around. And it shall come to pass that you should divide it by lot for inheritance unto you. And to the strangers, oh, it's going to be strangers in the millennium non-Jews that sojourn among you. So Gentiles are not completely wiped out. These are the ones and the nations that help the Jews in the tribulation period. They are the sheep nations which get to go into the millennium. And they shall be unto you as born in the country, natives, among the children of Israel, but they're not children of Israel. They shall have an inheritance with you among the tribes of Israel. Why? Because they helped you. See, God doesn't do things without reward. And when we read, I think it's Matthew 25 or 24, I forget, when Jesus says, you help my brother in prison and food and all that, they turn around and say, when do we help you? They had no idea what they were doing, and God rewards them an inheritance in the land. And you shall have inheritance with you among the tribes of Israel. And it shall come to pass. You know what that means? Take a guess what that means. 
That means everything we've read in chapter 47 is going to happen. It hasn't happened yet, but it's going to happen. That in what tribe the stranger sojourneth, there shall ye give him his inheritance, saith the Lord God. So inheritance to strangers to the land of Israel. And with scripture with scripture, these strangers again are the ones that help the Jews. And it's their reward. They get to be in the land. And they get to be among the Lord Jesus Christ and God's people. And this is just a touch of the iceberg of what the millennium is going to be like. It's going to be wonderful. One of the resurrection of Adam and me, they're going to come up and you know, smack each other. This is what we missed. This is all we caused. You realize with Adam and Eve, the reason for them is why we have hospitals, why we have graveyards, why we have a police and military. And yet in the, in the millennium, you're not going to need those things. And the Bible didn't read, was it last night or the night before? We recorded that you will sweat. It said you're not going to wear wool, which will cause sweat. You're going to sweat. And it was kind of weird because that's one of the curses that was brought upon Adam. He said, by the sweat of thy brow, you're going to labor in the field. Well, they're going to work in a millennium, but it's really not going to be a labor. Can you picture that time when, when the disciples went fishing? There's Jesus. They're fishing on the wrong side of the boat. Forever how long? And all the fish were on the right side of the boat. It's called starboard or port. But Jesus said, fish on the right side. He, what do you think happened? I know what happened. I'm sure of this 99.99 .99, more than ivory soap. God spoke in the little ears of all those fish and get in that net right now. The only one that did not listen was Peter. Because Jesus said nets. And Peter let down a net. When you read the God, see, there are people who don't read the Old Testament. It's too old fashioned. You're seeing the life of Christ. You're seeing what's going to happen. We just read something that I don't know when's going to happen. At least, at least seven years, at least, if the rapture happened tonight or this year, at least seven years till we see this happen. At least. It may be 14 years. It may be 140 years. It may be another thousand years, Lord forbid. But what I just read to you, whether you know it or not, you're going to take part in it under the Lord Jesus Christ. You will walk these banks, if able. I don't know the city you give. I don't know how much liberty we're going to have. But this is all going to happen. And it's you've got to get this one. It's all going to happen to a people called Israel, the Jews, the children of Isaac, Jacob, his twelve sons. They are God's people. And God put, which goes on to today, a blessing found in Genesis 12. You curse them, I'm going to curse you. If you bless them, I'm going to bless you. And there are people in the tribulation period, Jesus said, that are going to help these people. And we find out that they get an inheritance in the land which you didn't even find in the law. The law says you could have the strangers with you. But that land was Jewish land. And we find out in Ezekiel 47, the land is given an inheritance to those people that help the Jews. What do you think the Lord Jesus Christ is going to give you when you do what he tells you to do? How remarkable are those crowns going to be? Never mind the crown. How remarkable is it to have souls saved by some kind of work that you've done that they can get to be in glory by the Lord Jesus Christ, by your efforts, by going in all in the world and preach the gospel? Going to heaven 
It's just not going to heaven. There's much more going to heaven. That's why I like to go to that. I don't care about this world. I don't care about this earth. But as long as I'm here, I'm going to do what God tells me to do. I'm going to witness. I'm going to try to, to, to rebuke people. I'm going to try to exhort people. I'm going to try to help people. I'm going to try to show them the way of Christ, the truth, and the life. But listen, heaven is much better. Because the Bible says, if I were to die right now, I will be absent from the body and present with the Lord. And that's much better. That's Paul's word. But it's more needful for me to be here, Paul said too. Just going to heaven is not playing on a cloud with a heart. It's far more better than that. Outside of seeing the Lord Jesus Christ, there's one thing I, I want to see. I want to hear far, uh, far more to see the Lord Jesus Christ and praise him. I want to hear those cherubim. And I want to join in on their celebration. Because it won't be a football team. It won't be a baseball. It won't be a movie. It will be all for the Lord Jesus Christ. And I can't even picture what life will be without sin, without pain, without sorrow, and just pure holiness. You can pee your spiritual pants thinking about what glory is going to be. And Ezekiel 47 is just another tip. The iceberg. Because Ezekiel 47 is the millennium. It's not glory. New Jerusalem has not shown up yet. The new heavens have not shown up. The new earth has not shown up. And we got healing by water. We got trees that are going to produce fruit all by themselves. And their leaves are going to heal you. And you've got a land specified for God's people. He's taking care of those that love him. What do you think he's going to do in eternity? And this is with Satan bound for a thousand years. Think about when Satan shut up in the lake of fire for all eternity. What do you think God's going to do for us then? And then you got to ask yourself, why does Satan leave it all? And you got to ask yourself the same question. Why will people not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ? 